It's DTS 115, Rise of Iron is finally here. We go over all the changes in this week's show. No spoilers allowed. Listening to Destiny the Show. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Destiny the Show, the news podcast to keep you, the Guardian, ahead of the world in Destiny. My name is BBK Dragoon, and joining me as always is my awesome co host, Diddy, who's been streaming all day, and as soon as we're done recording, <laughs> he's getting right back on that stream grind, dude. What's up? Oh, man. I'm loving Rise of Iron. Last week hit uh, hit the movie of the week honorable mention. That's right, congratulations! With, uh, the percussion uh, ensemble cover that was awesome. So I'm gonna get that emblem pretty soon. I got the new Rise of Iron soundtrack from the Bungie store. It's awesome, and Rise of Iron is just really, really, really good. I'm really happy with it. And you got a new car, so you've had like the That's greatest <laughs> last week. And shout out to everybody who voted for Diddy in the movie of the week contest. That's just. It was so cool, man. Yeah, thank well you. deserved. Well deserved, in my opinion. That percussion thing that you put together must have taken a ton of effort. Yeah, about 20 hours of work. Okay. Uh, and then the reward was the brand new 2016 Volkswagen Golf GTI. Ooh, somebody's driving in style. <laughs> Just don't get a speeding ticket, okay? Those things no. might be fun, but the, the price is not worth it. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today's show, we're going to be going over the patch notes for Rise of Iron. We're going to talk about the changes. We are not going to talk spoilers, and we're going to keep it sort of a short show because you're playing. We want you guys to sit back, relax, and enjoy Rise of Iron this week. We don't want to bog you down with a bunch of unnecessary stuff. So we'll go over the changes in the patch notes. We'll talk a little bit about an article talking how year three won't be as dry as year two, coming from Polygon. On. And also, Archon's Forge and Wrath of the Machine, two activities that are going to require other people to play with. And Diddy, where might listeners of the show go to find other people to play with this week? Our Discord. We've got over 800 members at discord.me slash Destiny the Show. Remember, if you search Destiny the Show Discord, first link in Google does not work. So you have to use the custom link we have, Discord. Dot me, M-E slash destiny, the show. People are in there constantly showing, oh, I just got this piece of gear, I got this piece of gear. It's really awesome to sync up with other guardians and you can jump in, do some archons, forge, do some story missions, do some strikes, do whatever. Discord.me slash destiny, the show. Excellent. And also this week, if you guys go to twitch.tv slash destiny, the show, you can check out Diddy, who's going to be streaming Rise of Iron this whole week. He's ready, he's gearing down, and he will be one of the teams fighting for World First this Friday on the Wrath of the Machine raid. Oh, Last yeah. year, during King's Fall, they were in the lead at War Priest. Him and the Pineapple Boys were rocking a sick pace. So, could World First happen this year for Pineapple Boys? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Tune in to find it's out, man. It's definitely a possibility. We're, we're going to try. We're going to try. Awesome. Well, let's hop into the news patch notes and talk a little bit about year three. All right, Diddy, before the show, we actually try to pull up this Polygon link. It doesn't seem like the link's working anymore. Either Polygon's website <laughs> is having a hiccup or they pulled the article for some reason. But the title of it was Why Year 3 Destiny Won't Be As Dry As Year 2. Specifically, it talked about old raids being bumped up for Year 3. Is that correct? That's correct. They mentioned that it is something that Bungie would like to do. And they've definitely heard... Um, the community and they've put it on their list of top items that the community wants so they're thinking about it you know they they do think that you know they've given us a roadmap through the end of the year through december with um festival of the lost and sparrow racing league in december festival of the lost a little bit before that they say that's not the end that's not the end of the roadmap for year three they definitely understood that year two was very dry because they said, we're honest, let's be honest, we're players of the game too, and we would have liked to see more content in year two, but it just didn't happen. And yeah. year three, probably going to see some things coming back, but if they do bring back the raids, they want to give us a reason to go back. Mm. They don't just want to turn it on, 
yeah, it's going to drop current light level gear. Now, that's not necessarily what they're going to do. They don't like to do that. Just like the new strikes and the remixed strikes, they want to give you a reason to go back there. Yeah, there'll be updated remixed versions of the old raids, which is going to be fantastic and could lead to some awesome content early 2017. We have heard from the Activision CEO on an earnings call back in quarter two of this year that they understand players want more content. And when Activision is saying players want more content and we're going to give them more content, trust us, there's going to be more in year three than just Rise of Iron. There's a lot more around the corner. And remember, Rise of Iron, they started development late January. And now it's out. So if they can start putting things together in that like six, seven month time frame, and I am including a little bit of a buffer there, like a month or two for marketing and promotion, then there's a high likelihood we may see some stuff before Destiny 2 next fall. But that's really the gist of that article. We can't go into too many more details without the link actually working. I actually found it. I I archived it up. (laughs) Oh, and it's, it's the last paragraph. I'll quote here. They say, uh, this is um, Barrett talking, Scott Barrett. It's always consistently been in the top 10 list talking about going back to the Vault of Glass. Since the second raid came out, hey, we want to go back and play older raids. The simple answer is it's a matter of priority. If we spend time bringing that stuff, that means less new stuff we can build for this fall in Rise of Iron. Uh, or, excuse me, let me re-emphasize that. This means less new stuff we can build and for this fall in rise of iron we wanted new stuff new 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 let's give new places to go new raids stuff like that but we certainly hear that fans would love to have a reason to go back to some of the old raids so we're absolutely considering it awesome and i think you meant chris barrett not scott barrett right chris barrett yes well, you're, you mix Scott Taylor and Chris Barrett. They become <laughs> like a Voltron developer where they combine to become super developer. Well, that's exciting, man. I, I hope they, they bring those things back. It's my favorite content in the game. You want to move on to the patch notes? Let's do it. Okay, so we got a brief set of patch notes. There's a whole lot more that changed with Rise of Iron, but we're going to go through it. No spoilers are here. We're not going to talk about the campaign or the story, but really just the fundamental mechanical differences that have occurred to the playlist, the rewards. Guess what? Those green and blue engrams that kept dropping ever since Mm 2.4 went live, not a bug. It was intended, and we'll tell you a little bit why later in the middle of the patch notes. So first of all, Rise of Iron came out way early in the morning. You guys were right. I was wrong. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. Anybody who stayed up really late or got up really early, congratulate. Diddy's been up since, what, four or five in the morning? No, I, I got up at six. And to oh. my understanding, there were some server issues for about there two were. hours. Mm-hmm. So I kind of lucked out. I woke up and just walked in without any issues. <laughs> hey, we were right. The minimum character level to start the Rise of Iron campaign is level 40. Boop, DTS mm-hmm. prediction. Ka-chika! You the max get a light spark level. of light if you have pre-ordered. Mm-hmm. That's right. So you can instantly get a character up to level 40 if you pre-ordered the game. Is it that way if you just purchase the game? It's probably that way if you just purchase the game, I bet. I bet, yeah. Okay. Max light has been increased to 385. It'll remain 385 until the hard mode of the raid comes out. Mm, I think probably three or four weeks is usually when hard mode will come out. Right. So, and 400 light will be the new max level there. New bounties, new vendor weapons, new all sorts of stuff. Year two moments of triumph are over. Okay. Tonight at 10 PDT. No, it's over. It's actually over. It was earlier today, wasn't 10 it? 10 a.m. Yep. 10 a.m. It's over. If you got it, great. If you didn't, too bad. What's changing with the heroics, uh, Diddy? So the daily heroics will now include sections from year one, year two, and year three, Hmm. and they increase the light to 350 there. Cool. And those are the daily missions that you can select Mm -hmm. from the director. The Vanguard Strike playlist is now called the Taken War Strike playlist, but otherwise it's unchanged. The SIVA Crisis playlist consists of Taken King and Rise of Iron Strikes at 320 light. The Taken War Heroic Strike playlist is available for players who haven't purchased Rise of Iron and is accessible in the Vanguard Strike playlist page. It does not give you Vanguard marks anymore. The SIVA Crisis Heroic Strike playlist, this is the new Heroic Strike playlist, is now available to players who have Rise of Iron. This playlist is taking the place of the Taken War Heroics from TTK, obviously, and this playlist is also the weekly Heroic Strike featured playlist. Man, that's a mouthful. Recommended Light, 350. Diddy, is it the first three strike completions in that playlist will reward you with 10 legendary marks for each completion? Yes, I believe so. I believe that is the same. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So they've updated the strike playlist. And I think your first completion gives you a radiant treasure. I think that's where I got my first one. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. And I think that's the only weekly way for you to earn it. Yes. Yeah. It's no longer like three sterlings that you could get a right. week. It's one a so. week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So oh, what'd you get in yours, by the way? I, uh, well, so I, I spent some money and I got some extras, but I believe my first one, I got the uh, Zalo Supercell uh, ornament that like the camo one. And I was actually mm -hmm. using the Zalo Supercell because this week's Heroic Strike playlist uh, for the SIVA crisis is Arkburn. So I was I was using oh, okay. that and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> Those ornaments are so sexy. Some of the new gear, so sexy. There is the Warlock Exotic Helm, I can't remember its name. Has lightning bolts, looks like the Malak headpiece. Really mm -hmm. cool, horrible perk, horrible perk. <laughs> the, the flavor text was like, reduce the recovery on blank and it was supposed to reduce or at least what i thought it was supposed to do is reduce the amount of cooldown between blinks no 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 if you take damage and as your shields are recharging you blink it speeds that up <laughs> oh <laughs> it's, it's like the total getaway tool but it's a very minor difference i watched the planet destiny exotic review right before we did this i was like really that's kind of some people thought it was going to extend the distance of blink too anyway off topic what changed with the nightfall diddy it now requires Rise of Iron, and it is now at 360 recommended light. Mm -hmm. Is it random, which Nightfall you get in that playlist? Like, is it a different one each time? I believe so. I haven't done the Nightfall yet because I've only reached 348 light. And since okay. it's recommended 360, I didn't mm -hmm. want to even attempt it because that's going to be really difficult. I think I saw a few people talking about it on Twitter, but I'm going to hold off and say we'll let you guys know next week if it is or not. What do you think about it requiring Rise of Iron? Will that anger some of the people who didn't move on to year three? It will, um, but I believe with every expansion, the first Nightfall has been that new strike. Mm, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense to me. You know, new expansion, new strikes, new Nightfall to, to do. So mm -hmm. there you go. Okay. Normal strikes will now grant rewards up to 340 light. Heroic strikes will grant rewards up to 365 light. That's pretty sweet. The strike-specific skeleton keys can drop in the Nightfall and in the SIVA Crisis Heroic, as well as the Taken War strike playlists. The skeleton keys, by the way, are the things that have a chance to drop at the end of the Nightfall or the Heroics, and you can use them to open a chest at the end of a strike to get the strike unique reward. So let's say I want Grasp of Malak, I farm, I get a skeleton key by playing some of the playlists, uh, the Nightfall Strike or something in a heroic place. I get my key. I then go run the Omnigal Strike and at the end I can use my key. Boom. Grasp of Malak. Awesome way for you to go after the strike specific gear. The chest always spawns at the end of a strike. Always. Even if you awesome. select it from the director. Very cool. Strike Unique rewards will now drop up to 385 light. The Nightfall will now reward the player with ghosts less often, so other rewards will drop more often. Haven't we heard that before? Did we? <laughs> Just once or twice? <laughs> Players can receive one free Radiant Treasure per account through their first Heroic Strike playlist completion per week. Yep. Boom. Diddy, there you did go. a DTS prediction like 30 seconds ago. It's already right. <laughs> And this one hit me out of left field, dude. Varex will now grant weapon and armor for Challenge of the Elders scorecard completions up to 365 light. So if you still want to do some fast Challenge of Elders runs and you're looking for loot, it's part of your weeklies. You can now do your weeklies and implement Challenge of Elders into it for stuff up to 365. Totally did not think that was going to happen, but it's a great step for Bungie to go with this all activities lead to max light sort of mm -hmm. thing. Exactly. What's going on with Engrams, dude? Man, so first off, they fix an issue where after enough kills were accumulated, players would never see uncommon items drop again. Um, this resulted in players being starved of weapon and armor materials. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uncommon drops will be in addition to, not in place of, rare and legendary drops. So that means the greens and blues I've been seeing aren't taking the, the place of a legendary drop. It's just the greens and blues are going to be dropping now so I can have weapon and armor materials, right? So it's just the greens that are in addition to. So okay. it's just the yeah. uncommon green uh, armors and weapons that are in addition to the blues and purples 
drop it. So they, they did that so I have more mm-hmm. materials, right? Exactly. And it's actually very welcome because I had basically no armor materials. Yeah, I just y'all. played for eight hours in a, in a straight and I had over 300 at the end of it. So mm. it's, it's very, very welcome. Very cool. Now, the blue engrams, the rare engrams, can decode up to 340 light. Legendary engrams can decode up to 365 light. The legendary engram light value will slow down once you hit 350. So between 350 up to 365, that light value increase will slow down. And I'll say, I'll quote here from the patch notes. Within that range, engrams will grant the player something with higher light about half the time. End quote. So Diddy, it gets harder to increase my light the higher up I get, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. And exotic engrams can decode up to 385 light. The max right now totally makes sense. Faction packages can now drop items up to 385 light. They fixed an issue where the ships, sparrows, and shaders were dropping less frequently than intended. Yes! The ships <laughs> are going to drop more, dude! It's exciting. What's going on with Queen's Wrath as well as some of the House Judgment stuff? Queen's Wrath, so those faction packages will now contain Queen's Guard armor. And uh, Chasing Infinity. Chasing Infinity. I had to say it again. I, th- I think, isn't that the ship? Uh, Google it. You, you, you Google it while I'm going to be talking more. Uh, <laughs> so as we mentioned, the faction packages, you can inspect them and see what's inside of it. But if it's Dead Orbit, New Monarchy, or Future War, War Cult, wow, that was hard to say. Oh, actually, Vanguard and Crucible packages are included in this. So basically, all three main factions plus Vanguard and Crucible packages now allow you, the player, to choose one of three options. Weapon, armor, a chroma armor. So you get your choice when you're getting that package. Have you done this yet, Diddy? Did you get a package today? I have gotten faction packages What'd you today. pick? What'd you pick? Um, so I got a Future War Cult package, and then I got a Vanguard package. I selected weapons both times. Okay. And I got a yeah. Comedian, Shotgun, and something else that I infused uh, and then i got I switched to new monarchy because i had just got a future war cult and i wanted some new monarchy swag chose mm. some armor and i got some pretty sweet class items and gauntlets oh very cool and by the way the taken king armor and weapons have been removed from fac- faction pack packages i can't talk right now that's great so you're not going to get the old armor and weapons from these faction packages there's new ghosts and sparrows we've seen these guys leak like the images of the ghosts and the sparrows they look fantastic and there's a bunch of old weapons that will remain in their respective faction packages so you can still get a longbow you can still get a zombie apocalypse from the crucible faction package drops lord high fixers the badger ccl i'm glad that they left those items that showed up from the april update you know the year one throwbacks in for rise of iron pretty cool Arms Day, Gunsmith stuff, anything really worth talking about there? No, they just removed a couple of test weapons that required Crucible kills. So okay. um, just hard stuff to use in the Crucible. Vendor changes, what's going on there? So vendor items purchased for legendary marks have been increased to 350 light. So every mm-hmm. piece uh, of item that you see in the in vendor the tower. Yeah. in the tower is uh, at starting at 350 light. So that's actually pretty good because I've actually purchased a few of these items to boost my light. And uh, some of them are actually pretty great. Zer's exotics for sale have been increased to 350 light as well. We haven't seen Zer yet, of course, uh, but we will this Friday. So that's gonna be awesome. Zer, he now sells two exotic weapon ornaments per week for silver dust. And if you remember the things from your um, if you dismantle something from your radiant treasure, the, you will get silver dust. And it's just another consumable, another piece of currency. You can get that, uh, use those at Zer. And Zer will now carry legacy boot engrams. Yawn, boot engrams. <laughs> Except the new, what are they called? The dust marshers or something? The titan like pieces that make you faster? Mm hmm. Those look cool. I said the wrong name, guys. It's not. And they're not legacy, so you wouldn't be able to get it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, my <laughs> mind was on boots and stuff. So, year one class items are now available as the new Rise of Iron legendary class items. This does not include year one raid class items. The new class items can be found in Strike Hordes, Crucible and a Match Rewards, Legendary Engrams, Iron Banner Trials, Faction Packages, and Rise of Iron Vendors. So, basically, everywhere you're going to be getting year one class items. A lot of people are super stoked about this. 
22 exotic weapon ornaments have been added. These are like weapon skins if you're just showing up again. To apply an exotic weapon ornament, you have to have an exotic weapon ornament, which is something, uh, the, the little thing on the far right of your exotics when you inspect them, and you also need one silver dust to do so. Can you kind of explain the process of how you did it with your Zalo, Diddy? Um, yeah, so I actually had to dismantle something to get a piece of silver dust. Mm-hmm. And you will, sometimes you will get a piece of silver dust when you open your package, um, so you can use it right away if you wanted. Um, but I just opened up my Zalo Supercell. It Whatever ornament you get, will sh- it'll show you there. Just like if you have the materials or not, it'll say zero out of one. And you just uh, click on that. It consumes them and changes it. Yeah, and so the equivalent of weapon ornaments are laurels. And these are things that you can apply to your armor to give them a little bit of flair. Armor ornaments cost one to two laurels plus five silver dust to apply. Trials of Osiris laurels can be obtained from Trials Flawless Chests, one per character per week. Raid laurels can be obtained from the Heroic Raid Challenge modes, not just the Heroic Raid, but the Challenge modes. And Iron Lord laurels can be obtained from Radiant Treasures. Additionally, players will obtain one Iron Lord laurel from the Rise of Iron Record Book. Record books now appear in their own section on the character progress UI screen. Briefly, Diddy, what do you think of the Rise of Iron record book? <laughs> it's awesome. It is actually really, really great to show your progress, to figure out what you still need to do for guaranteed rewards. I think that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Eververse is changing. You can buy silver dust. Is it 200 silver per silver dust, Diddy, or is it 100 silver? Oh, I don't know. Okay. I don't Doesn't know matter. about the silver dust. Real real life money to buy silver dust. We're, we're being good podcast hosts and not encouraging you guys to do microtransactions. Kappa Reno, Cappuccino, Kappa. You can get them from Radiant Treasures. You can use um, silver dust to purchase unique Eververse items. Uh, Chroma from Eva Levante, all sorts of stuff. So go visit Tess if you want to check out what her new stock is. You can also just flat out buy Radiant Treasures from the Eververse store. Maybe that's it, Diddy. Maybe you can't buy silver dust. Oh, no. Silver dust is just available. So... I don't know. We got to go to the store and see what Tess is selling, okay? Sure. Oh, rep boosters. That kind of drew a stir. You can buy rep <laughs> boosters now with IRL money. Do we care? Is it a big deal? Yes, to some it's a really big deal. To me, it's not a huge deal because those rep boosters were cool, fun, didn't change the rate to a degree where I felt like it was that crazy of an advantage, did you? No. You still have to grind the faction levels to get mm-hmm. the rewards. It's yep. not, you're not buying rewards. You're not buying gear. You're buying just increased reputation gains. And yeah, if I, yeah. you get like two or three from from a package, from a treasure. Mm-hmm. So, nah, not a problem yeah, for me. I had a choice. I wouldn't want them in the game, but I can't change it. I'm not going to buy it. That's how I'm going to voice my opinion. That's the end of it for me. Like the, the best way we can speak is with our wallet. If you don't like it, don't buy it. That's probably the thing they're going to pay most attention to. In Crucible, the new maps have a higher chance of showing up in the playlists, and that is going to, over the next three weeks, sort of just settle down to where they're a normal waiting, so the maps all have a normal wait in like three weeks. Here's the thing that drew me in. There are a bunch of Crucible legendary weapons from year one that are now rewards from end of match, okay? And the big ones here that blew my mind, Hopscotch Pilgrim and Matador 64. There's a year three Hopscotch Pilgrim and a year three <laughs> Matador 64. Hopscotch Pilgrim between TTK and House of Wolves, one of the best pulse rifles in the game, extremely low rate of fire, super high impact, and with the right rolls, unbelievable. You could two burst people if you landed your headshots. It was so good. It was, but they actually changed it to a mid Oh yeah, impact, that's right. Uh, once Taken King came out, they because with the highest impact, you could get the god roll and get just insane two shot kills so they actually changed it so it's now a medium rate of fire with a medium impact pulse rifle tier but it's actually still pretty dang good <laughs> it's yeah it's a pretty sweet pulse rifle because that archetype actually got slightly buffed two two percent is, yeah that's right two percent damage buff but the matador 64 the og year one shotgun well ttk or excuse me house of wolf shotgun yeah there's some cool stuff is lunas are still dropping a lot party crashers are still dropping a lot i was excited about all this stuff uh, there's a new supremacy quest from Shax. There's new supremacy bounties. The Shaq week- Shax weekly bounty design has changed and now features a single multi-objective bounty for a specific featured 6v6 mode. And daily crucible bounties are available and updated for Rise of Iron. 
that's the full set of patch notes that we have here. Diddy, what's your initial impressions of Rise of Iron after a full day, and what would you encourage listeners who are just getting going? It's awesome. I absolutely think it's worth the money. Yeah, just today, you know, my reasoning was, you know, people will spend $15, $20 on a movie theater ticket for a two and a half hour movie now. And I just played for eight hours for $30. Mm-hmm. That's, I think that's uh, more rewarding to me than a movie. But anyways, I think the record book is phenomenal. It is so, so great because it allows you to track your progress, you know, at the end of the stream, I was like, man, what, what is there to do? I finished the story missions. I did a couple quests. What do I do next? And I just flipped through the record book. I'm like, oh, there's some things in the patrol that I still need to do. There are still some things. I haven't even touched the crucible. I have no intention of touching the crucible until at least Thursday <laughs> because I need to grind my gear up for the raid, which is around 360 light. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, there's a whole page dedicated to the crucible stuff there's a whole page that's just question mark that i can only assume is raid there's stuff to do still i've been playing for eight hours already i'm excited this this is a really good expansion i'm very happy with how destiny has uh has progressed in the last day (laughs) the two things i want to mention to listeners is from bungie developers themselves when asked in an interview I think it was the Game Informer, like hour-long interview, the fastest way to gear up. It was Archon's Forge. Mm-hmm. That is what the director said. So you want to find some people to be running Archon's Forge once you've completed the campaign and are progressing through the quest line. If you, especially if you want to get you know Wrath of the Machine going this Friday. Second thing that I wanted to mention to people is the visual improvements. I noticed within two or three missions immediately. There are a lot of visual improvements and some performance improvements. When you start the game up, at least on Xbox One, the initial title page shows up a lot faster. Now, the login (laughs) queue might take you a while during the first few days here, but there are improvements going on under the hood, especially when you see the snow falling and the blowing in the wind. And I'm really excited mainly because of the quality of life changes occurring with Rise of Iron. To me, this is, again, another step towards making destiny better and i'm excited just sit back and play this expansion the way you guys want to if you want to take your time please take your time if you want to rush it rush it go for it play this however you want and be kind to others in the way that they want to play the game you know it's funny on reddit you always have the battle of the people who are like oh you gotta get it all done within the first day and then there's other people who's like i just i want to relax i'm gonna take my time digest it that's the beauty man this is a pretty cool community and you can play this game however you want it sort of is the whole philosophy of destiny so where can people find you this week diddy i'll be streaming all week twitch.tv slash destiny the show starting around 6 6 30 a.m every single day streaming for as long as possible take a 15 30 minute lunch break in between and then i'm just right back at it and then take dinner break and then right back at it for another couple hours so twitch.tv slash destiny the show i'm also going to be hanging out in the discord our destiny the show discord discord.me slash destiny the show um once we get uh, some more things going we'll be playing we'll be joining with people in the discord and just joining the voice channels there partying up using the clan features in game of course and we'll be playing some rise of iron it's going to be a really really good time Excellent. You guys can go to our website, destinytheshow.com, for all the links from today and more. Keep an eye on destinytracker.com. These guys have huge things in the works, and just watch. If you're a PvP player who's interested in some cool private match stuff, they have something awesome in the works. I don't think I'm allowed to talk about it just yet, but it should be launching very soon. You can follow us on Twitter at Destiny the Show, and you can follow me on YouTube and Twitter at BBK Dragoon. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome week. Enjoy Rise of Iron, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.